Hello and welcome to another episode of From the Helm here on day two of the Resources Rising Stars Conference. I'm Grady Wolf, Market Analyst at Bell Direct, and another guest we've had on before recently, Sun Silver Executive Director Gerard O'Donovan. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Grady. So good to see you again. Yeah, cheers. Um, some news flow out recently. Tell us about what you updated the market with. Yeah, so we've had quite a, a few announcements recently. It's been a really busy time for us since we, we listed three months ago. Um, I suppose the biggest announcement we've released is a, a significant upgrade to our mineral resource. Uh, we've increased that by 45%, taking it to 423 million ounces um, of silver equivalent at a grade of 67.25 grams a tonne. Wow. Now, that makes us the largest pre-production uh, silver asset on the ASX, um, which is a, a fantastic position to be in to have such a significant asset of scale in, a, in an amazing jurisdiction like Nevada. And investors might not know the tie or the, the use of silver in this day and age and it's really crept up on a lot of investors and it's in a run right now. What's the outlook for silver and where do you see it going and what's the use of silver that investors should know about? Yeah, so a couple of key facts that I think people should, should know. Um, we've been in a silver deficit for the last four years. Uh, 20% year on year, topping out at 184 million ounces last year. Mm -hmm. Existing mines can't meet the demand, they can't scale up. Silver is inelastic, it's predominantly produced as a byproduct from polymetallic mines. Um, so it, there's a huge problem. There's yeah. a massive problem and it's only growing. So, you know, significant silver mines like Maverick Springs are needed, and that's why we're pushing it forward as quickly as we can in a development pathway. Um, but we're also working on, you know, some parallel streams. Silver paste is a is a, an area we're investigating heavily. Uh, we we kicked off a technological study with wood recently, and we also uh, submitted a grant application to the Department of Energy for a sixty million dollar investment tax credit. Uh, a decision on that is imminent, and we're 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 very hopeful that we we are selected to advance to the next stage. And and if so, um, that would open us to a wealth of funding. Uh, via the Department of Energy and the Inflation Reduction Act. So uh, silver is a really hot space right now. Um, it's getting more eyes and more attention, which it rightly deserves. Uh, and we feel we're one of the best value propositions on the ASX in the silver space. It's definitely not a well-known space, so it's good to be the leader of the space at the moment and such a newcomer to the ASX. Now, with Maverick Springs, where are you at in the production process? So how long to production? What's the like definitive feasibility study? Where are you at in the whole scope of mining? Yeah, so look, we recently released the upgraded resource. Now, that, that gives us a huge platform to build on moving forward, but um, that resource is not finished by any stretch of the imagination. So we're actively drilling as we speak and we've had intercepts that sit outside of that existing resource. So as I said, 423 million ounces in the resource as we speak. But outside of that, we've had intercepts of 40 meters and 50 meters up to, you know, 300 grams a ton silver equivalent. So huge scope for growth in the resource itself, but also stepping back into that, that 423 million ounces. We now plan on doing those development style activities, so we'll we'll commence more infill drilling yeah. to lift the classification to indicated. Um, we're looking at kicking off some metallurgical test work later this year. Yeah. And they're all the key inputs which lead to what you mentioned earlier, which are studies down the track, yeah. and then we can rack e wrap economics around it. But in the near term, significant value with the drill bit yeah. to be added, and that's what we're doing. We're midway through a seven and a half thousand meter program. We're going to continue on with that. And, and, and while we're hitting high grade thick silver outside of the resource, we're going to keep drilling. Yeah, absolutely. Now, mining in Australia is very well known and the jurisdictions are really well known. But for our investors who might not know how mining in Nevada is, what, how does it compare? Is it seasonal? What's it, what's it like? Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the best mining jurisdictions in the world. So Fraser Institute, one of the most reputable commentators on, on mining jurisdictions, has voted it in the top uh, three over the last five years, wow. no, number one in 2022. Um, it's it's a fantastic jurisdiction to work in. You know, I've worked in multi jurisdictions. This is probably one of the best, uh, if not is the best. Um, it has a well documented approval route. Uh, our project sits on federal land, um, and there's multiple operators in the region, and they're all billion dollar companies like Core and Barrick, um, and Kinross. So. It's it's probably the best jurisdiction in the world to be working in, and it's it's actually been a pleasure to, to work there since the outset. You know, as I said, we listed just over three months ago. Yeah. We've 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 got a drill rig on the ground. We've started drilling. We've got drilling contractors. We've got everything we needed in in extremely 
quick fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and that's essentially down to Nevada as a jurisdiction and our proximity to a, a huge mining town like Elko. Absolutely, Jared. Thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. And we hope you enjoyed that episode of From the Helm here at the Resources Rising Stars Conference. I'm Grady Wolf. If you did enjoy this episode, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.